While most people picture learning as sitting at a desk and writing, the students in Attleboro Public Schools are approaching learning in innovative ways. Jack and Kelvin, seniors in Attleboro High School's Career and Technical Education Carpentry Program, are working on their senior project, building a courtroom for criminal justice and mock trial. This has helped prepare them for their co-op experience, working with local businesses in the community. It's like you're actually doing things with your hands and then that's how you learn. It's not like, you can learn the basics of it through a textbook, but the way that you learn the most effectively is by actually doing, grabbing a hammer and shooting your nails, whatever is needed. The level of independence that we are given has, has kind of prepared me to just like, you know, be on the co-op with Calvin, like, because we're given a certain level of independence there too. And, you know, they have to trust us to do certain things the right way. I feel like um, it definitely prepared me in a sense that it made me more confident in being a carpenter. Coming up next week, we're actually going to be doing uh, finished work with the co-op. So this gave us a, like maybe like a base foundation of what it's like to do um, finished work. At Brennan Middle School, the 8th grade students have been working on their teamwork and creativity by making body biographies, where they created a visual analysis of characters from the book Real, the middle school companion to the Attleboro Big Read. So the hands-on project um, helps us bring together as a, as a group instead of just individually. And it also brings in other aspects of our learning, like our artistic skills. I feel like it just promotes um, more togetherness in our classroom. Classmates, I liked how we got to dive into the creative minds of some of the classmates. And I liked how, you know, there's not as much pressure on you because it's not independent. You have some of your peers to help you out. And it, it was more fun, you know, since it's not just like writing with a bleak pencil. I liked about the book how emotional and eye-opening it was, especially with people with special abilities. I like being in a group with people because of the, um, the learning aspect. We all get to learn from each other's ideas. Mason, which is what I did, which was charity's cousin. Because it wasn't people who I would usually work with. And, you know, they helped make the project more enjoyable, more fun, and they made learning more fun. They're simple. Meanwhile, the sixth graders have been crafting their own ziggurats within groups, using various materials and communication skills to recreate an ancient Mayan civilization. So right now we're building a ziggurat. A ziggurat is like a temple and it has a bunch of staircases. It was made out of very, very strong mud bricks and at the top is a holy place. That's where they did like rituals, sacrifices, and that's where the priests were. My favorite part of this project, um, I kind of like uh, kind of working together and um, we were kind of struggling at first, but as soon as we got everything together and we started like giving ourselves jobs and stuff, uh, now we're almost done. They're painting right now, so. I've learned that not everything's gonna go how you want it to go because you're working with other people and other people have some really good ideas. Even if you have this one good idea and you want to go with it, not not everyone's going to agree with that. At the high school level, students in Mrs. Stephenthaler's chemistry elective are lighting up the classroom. They were challenged with creating an electrical charge using only salt and water to light a light bulb. Through hands-on trial and error, students were able to learn a lot from this experience. What I like about this project is that we've done everything from scratch. We've grabbed the glasses, we've mixed the water in, um, and we get, we get to choose the amount of all the materials that we use, you know, the amount of wiring, what kind of bulb we use. That's just like the overall freedom um, that we're allowed is what's really great. Right. It's very hands-on, which I like about it. I like when a class is hands-on because it makes me feel like I'm actually learning because I'm physically doing something with my hands. So the challenges during this whole project is actually getting the bulb to work, getting the whole thing to work, because um, with all the different you know, components and parts in it, you know, all the wiring, the amount of salt, water, all the small details actually really, you know, they matter in the thing working. So just figuring out the right like, amounts of everything is, was pretty challenging. 
STEM activities are providing a fun, educational, and engaging experience for students at Studley Elementary School. The makerspace time dedicated allows a non-conventional method of learning where students get to explore and problem solve through hands-on activities. Because sometimes we get to do, like, we get to build stuff. And then, like, one time I built, I built, like, stair steps with these, like, kind of magnet things, and it was really cool. I try to see what I, like, I don't destroy it. I try to see, like, what it will fix. Like, if it's something that goes wrong, I'll try to be, like, I can try to build onto it because it might be better. First, doing the um, frame on the bottom. And then I'm going to put, like, the Q-tips up the four Q-tips up and then put the other Q-tips on top of the four on the side and then finish the top. Um, I really like how we can communicate and share our ideas. The achievements of student-led activities reaches far beyond the classroom. With the help of staff, the AHS Debate Club and Student Council organized a mayoral debate that was held at the Bray Auditorium and was open to the community. Obviously we have a brand new school, which I mean, we, we really we were able to take advantage of it and give the community um, something that will benefit them because they got to see a debate and that way they get to know their candidates and who they're going to be voting for. We all wanted to showcase the amazing things our students are able to do. And we all thought, what better way to do this than through this civic forum? So when you have tons of different people working and also even culinary with making food, and you have student council and uh, some people on the school committee and everybody coming together to make something for the public's you know, point of view, the public's attention, I think it really helped display the students' skills and properties about what we have with the new school versus what we didn't have with the old one. Some of my favorite aspects about the debate included um, being able to work on a team and uh, really have it like student-centered. Uh, you know, obviously we got some help from teachers and administration, but it was really like the students leading everything, uh, which was really fun. And then the actual, like the night of the debate, like everything was still student-led then, you know, the students pretty much led the evening. Obviously me and several other students were moderating the evening. Um, students introduced and closed the evening. Uh, so student involvement was really nice. Please share with us a time when you collaborated with someone or a group of people that made a positive we impact. We started developing questions, you know, what type of clothes we should wear, what type of, you know, tone we should give off, how long we should ask the questions for, how we could set up people sitting right there with the timers while we're up there. And then it kind of sort of just became, we got a lot of volunteers, assigned them to different jobs, like greeters, um, candidate handlers, um, people to hand out the, uh, not pamphlet, but the little piece of paper, and then people to hold the doors open. Reflecting on their experiences, students agreed that their involvement in the debate provided them with meaningful life skills. I mean, I think when you're learning in the classroom, obviously, it's, it's productive in your learning, but on some level, you don't get, like, the full understanding of it. So when you're actually running a debate, you get to see all the little the little problems that you'll run into, everything you need to work on, like even the little stuff just like lighting and everything, I mean, that was all stuff we had to think about when normally it would just be like the facts of it and how to set it up. So one of the most recent meaningful collaborations I've had. Moderating is something I had never really thought I would be doing. I've always kind of been comfortable with like public speaking and talking to large groups of people, but I think it was definitely hard for me to go against these candidates who like had all of their plots so written out and so perfectly created to have to like stop them when they're midpoint like that was definitely something that I wasn't prepared to do but learning what I said and learning what I had to say and being able to kind of gently stop them and direct them to what they were doing was something that took a lot of preparing but it was something that you kind of got easier as the debate went on and it was something that was very necessary. That's uh, that's one thing I was actually really excited about for the debate because uh, setting it up and uh, actually going up there and moderating, it, it's a lot of active learning, you know, something you can't learn from a textbook um, is actually like going out there and, and learning how to put a group of many different students together to put on this whole thing. I think this process was different because I think even in the questions you could tell that the kids weren't doing it to like impress someone, they were doing it because it's what they wanted to be shared. It was really personal, it was something that the students involved 
were passionate about. They weren't just doing it for a grade. They weren't just doing it because they were told to. They were doing it because they actively wanted to be involved and they cared about the cause. This is a Blue Pride production created by Attleboro High School's radio and television broadcasting program.